freezer paper is this like wax paper sort of stuff. It's got a parchment side, so that's like the paper side, and then it's got a waxy side on the other side. And that's the shiny side. The waxy side is gonna fuse to our fabric and the paper side is gonna be where we draw our design and that's where we're gonna put our iron as well. So y'all should all have some of this paper. It's, it's pretty um, unique. It's usually used to like wrap food up and store it, but we're gonna be using it um, for this purpose today. So I'm gonna start by laying out my t-shirt and picking where I want my stencil to go so I know how big to cut my paper. So I've got my white t-shirt today. So normally when we do um, t-shirt designs, traditionally, we can obviously do whatever we want on the whole shirt. We usually put any of those designs that go on our chest, four fingers from the uh, hem of the neckline. And again, do whatever you want. You could definitely do sort of like a scallop pattern on the bottom of the shirt, you could put something on the sleeve, you could put something on the breast pocket area. But I'm gonna do, um, for my uh, white t-shirt, I'm gonna do mine, the traditional four fingers from the top. So I've got a piece of paper. You don't need a ruler or anything fancy. I'm starting four fingers from the top, so I want my design to start right there. And maybe I want my design to kind of line up with the collar at its biggest point, so I'll do kind of a mark right there, and a mark right there, and I think that's a good end point for my stencil. So I've kind of marked off this square space. All right, so this is just gonna be the outside limits of our design, basically, based on where we want it to go on our T-shirt. So I'll set my T-shirt aside for now. So this is our max size. So I'm gonna take a second to kind of trace it onto my paper, leave room for me to make other versions. Oop. Just in a rough way. All right, so this is regular drawing paper. I'm just gonna sketch out my design um, before I cut it out in the freezer paper. So in this design phase, I'm using really rough, sketchy lines. I'm not too worried about making a final image or anything like that. This is just my time to kind of experiment and see what I can put in my space. You're also welcome to do it the other way around. Like if you already know what your design looks like and how big you want it to be, then you can just start with that and, and kind of place it around your shirt to see where it would best fit. Um, when we make stencils, we want to be really careful that um, we're making a design that has um, a sort of structural integrity when we cut it out. We don't want any pieces hanging loose. All right, that's my super rough sketch. I've got a super black marker. You can use like a regular Crayola marker. You can use a Sharpie. Uh, anything with an intense color. So you can use like black, red, or blue pretty much um, because we'll be tracing our design. And so we want whatever our um, our lines are to be, are to be super dark and, and easy to see. All right, so we've drawn our design as we want it to look. And by that, I mean that everywhere that there's black ink, that's where I want yellow paint to go later. So we call this a positive image of our design. Um, I've left big gaps in between all of my shapes, um, and that will be where our paper is held together um, like a web. So now we're gonna transfer it to the wax paper. Got this piece right here. 
covers my whole design. I don't want to get too close to the edges, so it looks it looks like this piece of uh, wax paper will do good. I'm gonna trim some of it off. Now I'm gonna tape my wax paper to my sketchbook so it doesn't bubble up on me. The wax paper wants to curve because it's lived in a roll its whole life. So we wanna lay it flat so we can see our design through it. Don't want it to be too close to the edge. So like I'm giving myself room on all of the edges and then my sunbursts are too close to the edge. All right, you can see our design nice and clear through our pretty transparent or partially transparent freezer paper. So now I've just got a pen and I'm gonna trace all my shapes through. And now the reason we do our design on a separate sheet of paper is so that if we make any mistakes or we wanna do any erasing, we wanna change it around, we can do that on our paper and not on our freezer paper. The freezer paper doesn't take eraser marks really well. We really also wanna minimize folding as much as we can of the freezer paper. Um, don't want any, any big creases or big tears in it. So we wanna do all of our big design, whoops, sorry. All of our big design changes uh, in sketchbook paper rather than in in the freezer paper. Only final designs on our freezer paper. Awesome. So now I'm gonna peel my tape up. Set our sketchbook aside for now. Now if your design If your design is simple enough, you can use scissors to cut it out. If your design has any smaller details, like maybe the like inside bits of my, whoops, I keep touching the camera. Maybe the inside bits of the sunbeam, um, we can use an X-Acto knife for those. So I'm gonna show you both uh, in parts. So we don't wanna to do too much creasing or folding, so we wanna be really gentle as we kind of get our scissor to the inside of the paper. Okay, so you can definitely cut out your design with scissors, um, but if you have smaller details or if you have curvier shapes, you can also use an X-Acto blade. Um, be careful and let a grown-up know that you want to use one. Um, X-Acto blades have a twisting, the way that the blade is held on is there's a twisting um, kind of pincer component here. So as we twist um, our handle close, that that uh, little pincer kind of tightens down on the blade. So what that means as we use our blade is that sometimes the handle will kind of twist in our hand. And so unconsciously we'll be kind of loosening it and loosening it and our blade will wanna uh, wiggle forward or wiggle out or it'll start bending back and forth. So kind of just checking periodically to make sure that your blade is tight is a good way to start. Um, we're gonna be using just we should never be using like the back of the blade really. Like I know our blade comes with like this nice long uh, sharp edge. We should only be focusing on the front over here. So we're gonna press down just with that tip and pull really, really slowly. I 
it takes a lot of practice to use an exacto blade you have to push really hard and move really slow but it's a good skill to practice it exercises our hand muscles, exercises our coordination, exercises our patience and responsibility. All good skills to have. And it can be a lot more precise than scissors. So we can take on these much smaller shapes that our scissors would have a hard time getting into. All right, once we have our negative design, we're ready to transfer it onto our t-shirt. All right, I've got my iron on a kind of medium heat setting. Mine says rayon wool. I'm gonna give it a quick pass. And then I'm gonna line up my design where I want it. I said four fingers from the top. There it goes. Looks good to me. So I'm going to start by placing my iron right in the center of my image and then really slowly and really gently moving from one side to the other. We don't want to leave our iron in one spot for too long, but we also want to move slowly enough that we don't accidentally uh, catch a corner of our stencil and rip it. So we're moving real slow, all different directions. I'll go all the way this way, make sure my little extra tail fits. We're just gonna do a few passes. Um, the wax of our paper is now melting and fusing to that fabric. All right. I'm gonna unplug my iron really quick. Okay, now we're ready to paint. Before we start painting, we wanna put something between the two layers of our t-shirt so that we don't get something uh, that bleeds through to the back of the shirt. Um, you guys have a big piece of cardboard for this. I have a butter, a butter box. All right. So now the back of our shirt is protected. I can see my butter box through my uh, my fabric so I know that it's right where I want it to be. So normally when we paint on canvas I like to remind you guys not to use too much paint. Painting on fabric is different. The fabric is gonna soak up all of our paint pretty quickly so I've got quite a lot of paint on my palette today um, because I want it to be in a nice thick even layer. And I don't want my t-shirt to soak all of that uh, paint away. So as we come to the edges, we're gonna kind of follow the line of the edge, be real gentle, short strokes, so we don't accidentally pull up our stencil. The other thing we wanna do is, and I just did it, we wanna be careful not to drag our shirt fabric at all, like that, because it'll stretch the, the fibers. As it is, we're already adding way more moisture than these uh, fibers want to have in them. Really careful in all of the corners. I'm going right up to the edge of my stencil, but I'm not um, pushing under it at all. See, I already ran out of paint. It takes a lot of paint. All right. So I'm gonna kind of go by and, and just smooth out some of my brush strokes, but we want a pretty thick layer of paint and that's definitely what we got. We don't want any, um, any white spots. Still trying to be careful not to pull up my shirt any. I'm just gonna smooth it out a little bit. All right.
set my palette aside now, but oh no, I made it a little over the edge. It's okay. So before our paint dries is when we wanna pull up our stencil. If we wait until our stencil is dry, these areas where the paint crosses paper and fabric, those two edges will melt together and they'll kind of, they'll wanna rip as they pull apart. Whereas right now, if we pull them apart, the paint is still so liquid that it's just gonna kind of separate cleanly. So while our paint is still wet, we'll reveal our design. So now we're gonna let this dry fully. I did get a little bleeding in a couple places. You see I had some bleeding under the stencil here and here, but that's okay, nothing to worry about. I have a part where I kind of crossed the line. All of it is gonna be beautiful no matter what. Um, but yeah, that's our silkscreen stencil. I'll show you guys a couple more um, quick versions in a little while. Um, some two color designs and some uh, some negative images as well. So we'll do that. All right, so we're gonna knock through two other kinds of uh, designs you can think about. One of them is gonna be the negative image. So rather than having um, kind of the space where we want color to be cut out, we have that inside shape cut out. So we can iron on just a little piece. So we've got this one on here. I'm gonna transfer this on top of a piece of scrap paper first. So I don't have any bleed through. So rather than painting the inside, we can paint around the edge of this design. Kind of create a little halo-y effect. I'm making sure to pull, I'm going from paper to fabric. I'm not going fabric to paper because that's gonna reduce my chances of accidentally um, pulling up on my shape any, any more than I have to. All right, the other kind of alternative design we can do is actually a two color design. So we're gonna start with whatever shape we want to be on the bottom. So we'll paint this shape in first and then we'll let it completely, whoops. Aw, oh, man. All right, we'll let this completely dry. All right, so once our first layer of design is completely dry, we're gonna take our second stencil and line it up where we want it. 